Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new video. Today I wanted to make a complete free to play melee training guide. I'm going to be explaining uh, training locations, the different equipments, the different combat styles, and really anything you need to know to start training your melee stats in free to play. Now I really am only going to be giving you uh, tips on how to get to level 50 in each of your melee combat stats because at that point you are going to be investing a lot of time with very little reward. At that point, I would recommend if you can to go to a membership, but levels one to 50 is pretty quick and fun, even in free to play. Anyway guys, hope you enjoy and let's get started. So before I get too far into telling you what locations to go to, which gear to equip and whatnot, I want to explain some of the basics for people who might not know. To begin with here, there are three melee combat skills, attack, strength, and defense. Now for the purpose of this video, they are all going to be trained in the exact same way. Now the way you train each skill individually is by switching between different attack styles. For each weapon, there will be an attack style that will give you attack experience. There will be an attack style that gives you strength experience and there will be an attack style that gives you defense experience. Now the way you know which attack style is going to give you experience and which skill is by going over to the combat interface. It'll be the icon with the two cross swords and hovering your mouse over and it will tell you what experience type it's going to give you. Now the amount of experience you get in melee combat is determined by how much damage you are doing to the monster. So in general, for every one point of damage you do to a monster, you are going to be getting four experience in whichever attack style you choose in 1.33 experience in hit points. So because of how this mechanic works, in a simplified view of it, it does not matter which monster you are attacking. The amount of experience you get is based on the amount of damage you do. So if you do one damage to a chicken, you are going to be getting four experience in attack. If you do one damage to a dragon, you are going to be getting four experience in attack. Now the reason that people don't fight chickens all the way till level 99 is because of their hit points. The hit points level of your enemy is what's really bottlenecking you from fighting these lower level monsters. Because if you're strong enough to do 10 damage and you are fighting a chicken that only has 3 HP, if you were to hit a 10, you would really only do 3 damage to the chicken, 7 of that damage being completely lost and wasted. Now you might consider hit points a melee skill. You are never going to go out of your way to train it. It will just be leveled up automatically by training with melee, ranged, or magic. But in general, you are going to be getting 33% of whatever damage you are doing into your hit points. So if you are getting 30,000 experience an hour uh, training at a monster, you would be getting about 10,000 in hit points. So now you might be wondering, well, there are three different melee combat skills. Why are there three different ones? Well, let's start with strength. Strength is actually what increases the max amount of damage you can do. If you leveled up all your other combat stats, except for strength, you left it at one, you would never hit more than one damage. You might hit one damage very consistently, but you'd never hit more than one. Next up is attack. Attack determines how often you are going to hit your opponent, as well as which weapons you are allowed to equip. And last up, defense. Defense will determine which armor you can equip, as well as it will reduce the chance of an enemy hitting you. So to explain this further, each enemy has a potential max hit. So assuming that their max hit is, let's say, 5, having a high defense level will not reduce the potential damage they can do. They could still hit you for a 5, no matter what your defense level is. However, having a higher defensive level and having better defensive equipment will reduce the chance of them hitting at all, as well as the chance of them hitting a higher number. In general, people favor training their strength first. The reason for this is that you will get an increased maximum hit, which has the greatest impact on increasing your experience rates and just the general rate that you kill things at. So often people will train from, let's say, 40 to 50 strength, and then they'll train from 40 to 50 attack, and then from 40 to 50 defense. The one major exception for this is when you are trying to get higher level equipment. If you happen to be level 39 attack and strength, it would make more sense to get 40 attack because then you'd be able to wear the rune scimitar which would give you a greater increase in damage than just getting one more strength level. However, in almost all cases, people will train their defense last, but really it's up to you. No matter what you're training, it's going to be helping you out in combat. Now let's go talk about the melee armor and weapons that are available in free to play. The best weapon pretty much in all circumstances is going to be the scimitar. There are scimitar shops or you can just buy them from the grand exchange. Now the reason why the scimitar is the most used is because it has a good balance between attack speed and melee damage. Or for those who play other video games, it has the highest DPS, which is the damage per second. Yes, the Rune Battle Axe actually does more damage per hit, but it attacks so much slower that it does not make it worth it to use. So besides the weapon slot, the only other item in free-to-play that will actually increase your damage is an amulet. 
specifically the Amulet of Power or the Amulet of Strength. Every other piece of equipment is armor and will not increase your damage in free to play. In membership, that is different. Okay, so now let's whirl back a bit. So you just got off to Toril Island. What should you buy for your very first piece of gear? So at level one, you can go ahead and buy iron. You can buy an iron scimitar and the full iron set. Now you might notice for each of these metal tiers of items, there might be a few different options. Specifically, there is the med helm and the full helm. There is the chain body and the plate body. And there is the square shield and the kite shield. You're always gonna wanna wear the plate body, the full helm, and the kite shield. So for example, at level one, you're gonna want an iron full helm, an iron plate body, an iron kite shield, an iron scimitar, iron plate legs, and an amulet of power. Now, two questions I wanna quickly answer before we go on. One, is there a difference between the plate legs and the plate skirt you might see? No, there is not. They are the exact same, just one's for male, one's for female. Number two is, should you be using the amulet of power or the amulet of strength? For the sake of this video, I recommend just always using the Amulet of Power. There are certain circumstances when you might want to use the Amulet of Strength, but overall the Amulet of Power is better. So with that all of the way, let's start just with a basic gearing guide. At level 1, you want to have an Iron Full Helm, an Iron Plate Body, Iron Plate Legs, an Iron Kite Shield, an Iron Scimitar, and an Amulet of Power. At level 5, you want to upgrade to Steel, the exact same items except the Steel variant. At level 20, you can upgrade to Mithril. Again, the exact same items except in the Mithril variant. At level 30, you're going to upgrade to Adamant. And at level 40, you're going to upgrade to Rune. So when I say level 40, it's going to be split between the two skills. So at level 5, Defense, you can upgrade to Steel. At level 20, you can upgrade to Mithril and so on. Now the same is true for Attack. At level 5, you can upgrade to the Steel Scimitar. At level 20, you can upgrade to the Mithril. And at level 30, Adamant. And finally, at level 40, Rune. Now at level 10, you can actually wear black equipment. However, it can be hard to obtain as it's not sold very frequently on the Grand Exchange and can be more expensive because it is used for uh, pay to play clue scrolls, which makes the price a bit higher than what the combat stats would suggest. However, if money isn't an issue, you can definitely go ahead and buy a set of these. It's just between levels 10 and 20 does not take that long. You won't be getting a noticeable boost in combat stats. If anything, I would try to buy the Black Scimitar. You can probably stay with Steel Armor all the way up until Mithril. Okay, so you've got geared up, so where should you train? So a very simple location from levels 1 to 10 is going to be Chickens. They are located north of Lumbridge and a bit northeast across the river. I will be leaving a map for all of these locations to make it simple. They have three hit points, they're easy to kill, and they'd almost do no damage to you. One other thing worth mentioning is when I say levels 10 to 20, for example, I am talking more about your average combat stats together. So if you had something like 25 attack, 20 strength, and 15 defense, I would say your average combat level is around 20. Now you can't actually go by your combat level, However, that can be affected by other combat skills you may have trained. So if you have something like 50 range, your combat level is going to be way above 20, even if your melee combat skills are low level. So that is why I suggest just taking an average of your attack, strength, and defense. And if you're around the required level, you should be fine. From levels 10 to 20, killing cows is a very good option. They have 8 hit points and are located in almost the exact same location. There are a ton of cows to kill, so you are never going to be fighting people over a monster. From levels 20 to 30, a good option is Barbarians. They are located in the Barbarian Village, which is just a bit west of Varrock. They have 18 hit points and 25 hit points, depending on the Barbarian that you attack. From levels 30 to 50, you have a lot of options, but two of the most popular monsters to train on are Hill Giants, as well as hobgoblins. Now at this point, I think it's worth saying is if you are training and there are a ton of other people with you, you are not doing it right. Yes, certain monsters are gonna be a little bit more effective for training, but that edge is gonna disappear right away when you have multiple people contesting the same monster. You're better off going to somewhere inefficient that is empty as opposed to going to one of the most popular and effective training methods, but having to be packed. So for that reason, I would recommend trying Hobgoblins. They tend to be a lot less people there. Similar drops to Hill Giants with just a little bit less hit points to play with. Other good options to train on are uh, Flesh Crawlers, which are located in the Stronghold of Security, 
as well as moss giants which are located in the Varrock sewer. Now there is nothing stopping you from training your melee combat stats past 50 but at that point the experience rates in pay to play are going to be increasing rapidly where free to play is going to cap out around 50 to 60. The main reason for that is that there is no better gear after 40. Anyway guys that is about it. There is a lot of stuff you can break down about the combat even further but those are the basics. I hope I didn't miss anything. If you have any questions regarding this at all, don't hesitate to ask any questions in the comment section. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. If you're looking for another way to support the channel, I will leave a link for my Patreon in the description as well as there should be an end card on screen now. I would appreciate it if you guys checked it out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.